All right, we back at it home. Grown Radio, Chuck Dizzle, DJ Head, man. We got the Grace Park legend joining us right now, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this interview. I'm already telling you right now. Huey Briss, what's going on, big dog? How you living, champ? I'm good, man. How y'all doing? We Bless, good. Black hey, and highly favored. You, you know what's wild, bro? I feel kind of cheated a little bit in a sense because I thought, and, and you have one of those names where it sounds like the real name. I thought Huey Briss was the, the government, bro. That's why I put the whole thing in the interview I did. Cause I was like, let me let everybody know I'm a human ass being. <laughs> <laughs> like my name is not Huey Briss. That's fake. Let me kill y'all Santa complex early. Cause why why Huey Briss then? Oh, uh, because I used to write like back in the day. And um I was going by Hubris. And I used to go by LB back in the day and the homies was telling me like nah you gotta change your name bro you are not Long Beach as long as it was like as long as Snoop Dogg alive bro, and, and, and no point in surpassing those, those those shoes are filled already and, <laughs> and, and and then so I was writing under that name Hubris so I was like because I can't walk around calling myself Hubris like I looked up the <laughs> definition I'm like oh damn I didn't know it was like that I said oh I said fuck it I'm gonna be Huey Briss it sound a little more friendly Nah, but, Huey Briss is for sure a little more flyer than, than Hubris, but so so when but when you came up with it, when the, when coming up with the writing aspect of it, you just wanted to go by a moniker that was separate from just a regular name. Like what, what was the what was the thought process behind the, the Hubris? Well, well, I'm, when I was LB, I was like Lil Brian because my dad was Brian, so I was Lil Brian, so they just called me LB. So I thought I was slick, like nigga Long Beach, what's up? Right. <laughs> but when it came down to thinking, I'm like, damn, I didn't want to go like too like rapper but i didn't want to go to like when i got thick like oh greek mythology Hugh, huey briz and it's like nah bro like shit sounded fly i learned the shit after yeah yeah yeah, yeah. straight <laughs> like, up i'm gonna get your ass up out of here with that shit <laughs> you know me? that's what i'm saying now but, now be, be, I, I, could, being... I couldn't go by my real name not at all brian nah I mean... why you don't like brian it just sounds too like mailman or like I don't know. It just sounds too. <laughs> it don't sound like Bryant and with a T too. So I was like, damn, that's Kobe last name. Niggas gonna always have something to say about my name. It's gonna be something. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be something either way, no matter which way you flip it, bro. To be honest, I ain't never gonna get past it. No, but what what I what I fuck with about your style, man, is is like you said, you can tell you're you're. you're you have a lot of thoughts when it comes to the concepts and, and shit that you write, right? But at the same time, you are from Long Beach, right? So there's a different element where you're gonna people, you're gonna get people that's gonna judge you off the bat just being from Long Beach. So how do you navigate between those worlds of you know wanting people to hear what you got, you know, to 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 offer, but at the same time, you know, being being from a staple city like Long Beach? I had a lot of like mentors, man, like Vince Staples is one of my good friends. He kind of been helping me navigate. And kind of stay like grounded because that's kind of what makes Long Beach artists tight. Yeah, yeah. And we could go anywhere in these big celebrity rooms. Long Beach. <laughs> it'll be like, you know, like we got the weed, got the making sure everybody cool. Like, so I try to just stay grounded as possible with it because it's like me and from Long Beach already, it's like you get grounded by default because you ain't never gonna be bigger than the homies. Yeah. So it's like let the, right up. please stop. Be yourself, you'll get there faster. So that's kind of my whole thing. Like I never wanted to be thirsty for nobody attention being from Long Beach either. It was just kind of like, I don't know what else to rap about. Yeah. But what's some what's some piece of advice that that Vince has given you that that's kind of like kept kept oh you in? Worry about yourself and your family. Like I feel like being from um the West Coast and being from Long Beach, we kind of like take on other people's battles and we take on other people's shit as we go along. And it's kind of like Kind of like stay in your own little bubble. Worry about you and your family. You can't help nobody till you can help yourself. Facts. So don't get caught up in people business. He taught me like, it's so easy to get caught up in people business. You came here for some whole other shit and now you associated with people you didn't even really like rock with. Your mama ain't never even met their mama before. Like, why is you going, you know, you, this your career, bro. Like treat it like, treat it like it's something. Do you think that, do you think that um, people get caught up? Like, I mean, I don't know if you've had this experience yet because I know you fairly, you know, new to the game as far as like participating in it. But do you think that people get caught up in thinking in, in romanticizing this industry, like thinking like, oh, like, oh, it's this and all we boys or oh, you said you was going to do the verse and you never get the phone call back or. That's the number one rule. That's how everybody get disappointed. And that's how everybody lose their steam. You ever seen a rapper get their yep. steam going? 
Oh, they get their steam, a few ARs in their DMs, a few big rappers then tapped in. Now they waiting on this before they drop the remix, or I can't do this until so and so said he's gonna do the video. All that is like smoke and mirrors. That's the number one thing. That's the number one reason why I'm I'm glad I came in the game later, like at 28 now, because I could see shit for what it is. If a nigga gonna send the verse back, bro, he would have sent it. He would have sent it <laughs> right up. Now, now you you mentioned something uh before in terms of like you know, having to pass on deals or not being too thirsty for things like that, man. Talk about your mindset when when things like that happen, because I feel like, you know, it's hip hop and, and it's the entertainment business. So it's easy to kind of get caught off with these offers from either A&Rs or even from radio, like, oh, we're going to play your shit or just all these things that comes with the allure of being an artist. How did how did you not get jaded or, or did you get jaded and, and kind of learn lessons early? I just want to say, first and foremost, do whatever works for you if you are watching this from a... a from an artist standpoint, if you got your uncle who work at Epic and he could get you in there and da, 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 like, don't, don't stop, do that just because yeah. motherfuckers you look up to did it their way. Um, nepotism. Me, nepotism is nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Um, but me personally, I just feel like from my standpoint, I'm a hip hop artist. I like samples. Labels don't like samples. Right, 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 I, like, right. I like spontaneous shows, hand over fist payments. They don't like that. They want to see where we going with that. So it's so much things that I want to get away with before I get to a point where I need them. I want to get away. Me, I just want to kind of get away with shit before they start getting on my head. Like, oh yeah, this nigga getting away with it. But me personally, like, I don't, have, I don't, I don't, I don't got no malice when it comes to no labels. I have been slowed down. I will say this: labels will slow you down as an independent artist if you do kind of have a plan and a team. I will rock with them first and see how that rock because it's just a year. You got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to, it's, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to miss out on no label money by doing you and testing your waters. But at the same time, I do feel like without a goal, it don't matter if you got a label, if you got independent, if you got your granny inheritance, if you don't got no real goal and no real firm, like, t like tangible goal you want to do, like, oh, maybe I want to buy flip houses or maybe I want to you know if you don't have no entrepreneurial mindset eventually no matter what you do in life it's going to run dry so what's the end goal for 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 Huey Briss what when you when you say that as you're getting into becoming an artist or just things what what's the things that you like man this is the end goal for me you no know, I feel like I'm a player in the game and every every player want to be a head coach my goal is to be like the, the best coach to help artists get to where they got to go to use my influence and my likeness from over the years of me building it building it and being able to do to give it to like start my you know start my empire and be able to actually tangibly help people because i feel like people like helping people inspirationally like in spirit yeah like, the, the, the the post the post on love, ig people the love helping in spirit and there's nothing wrong with that we love all energy but i'm really from a city where i watched the nigga really start a football team he really mm. he really actually be donating Thanks. silently so it's like yeah. People be in the city may have their own perception of that man, but it's like, yeah, your books and that little program you sent your son to, the YMCA, yeah. So you better put some respect on it. So right. I'm just all about the tangibility of your talents. To me, we, me and my homie buddy, uh, we talked about this today. We work out together, and um, we talked about the, the how how it's important to really be tangible with with your items because success is so fickle it's like it feel good we was just at a diddy party we was around so many successful people but when it came down to like actual moves they was looking at us like we the guys i'm like oh i see what's actually going on here they got the success we really got the actual yeah. tangible talents so yeah. I get, so now I'm starting to get what this industry really is. It's all about using your accolades and using what you've worked hard for in your own way. You and your team making it look good for y'all. If you, you got a Grammy nomination, you was just a fucking drummer on there. You better make it look sexy because that's money. For sure. I always say, uh, take advantage of your advantages and I always tell the homies, like, you gotta, you know, definitely don't run away from it. You know what I'm saying? Lean into it and, 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 and make sure that you, Capital, like you said, utilize everything that's available to you because a lot of people don't have nothing to work with. I didn't. I'm 28. I just got, I've been rapping since 2011. I just got popping what like, April. I just tangibly got right. something to show my mama. Wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, yeah. look, like after all that time where you put money into me, 
hopefully in three years I can give it all back to you. And right, right, right. No, I I, lo- I I like that. Um, I noticed that too. A lot of a lot of in your content. Um, and you, I mean, I know you've posted her, but um, I also like the video too. And I love I like the relationship that you kind of describe with your mom. And you saying that you know your mom had you when you were twenty years old, and y'all kind of grew up together. And I think that's that's relatable to a lot of people where we from. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like we 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 be, we become like babies. They say babies having babies, right? Oh God. Okay. And, and 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 that being said, do you think that do you think that you benefited, or you think you you it hurt you having a mom that was that young, like learning as y'all, both of y'all learning as you go? Being completely transparent with myself and y'all, man, I feel like I had a mix of both because I definitely was the kid that got away with murder because my mama, <laughs> allegedly my mama was was so young. You know what I'm saying? She really. If my granny didn't look, it didn't happen. So it's kind of like granny was the big dog, but having my mama there that I could be like, hey mom, like I didn't have to talk to her a certain in a certain tone. I didn't have to like dress a certain way. I didn't have to earn my mama respect. Like, you know, when you walk in the house and granny be like, put them pants up before you even talk uh, to me. Right. Wash them hands, put them pants up, da, 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 before we even talk. Like my yeah. mama, I could come in there with a bullet wound. She gonna be like, <laughs> And what, and what really happened right right like my mama was always hella cool and fun fact like she not saying i don't i can say this now that i'm older she she wasn't she wasn't too mad when i dropped out because i feel like she had the vision Got and you. i feel like she saw something in me like that them other kids didn't have because i was bad but i was more so like you know the bad kids that's bad but at the same time it's like i'm only bad enough to where if like oh we going there <laughs> I didn't know we was, I'm not stepping over that line. Oh, I didn't know we was going there, y'all. Oh, we being bad, bad. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go buy some shoes or something. But, <laughs> but my mom was always there, so it benefited me a lot just because I could really be myself. So now when I talk to people, it's like I could. They they always say don't do nothing in front of people that you wouldn't do in front of your mama. Man, as long as it ain't nothing like, you know, weird, I pretty much could do whatever. When you you just brought up um, dropping out, right? And obviously yeah. you dropped out of school. Uh, what age do you think, or what grade do you think somebody could have stepped in and quote unquote saved you oh, from man. from the streets, from dropping out, from getting in trouble, whatever? What do you think the age is for that? Like we're like in real life, where somebody could have like, no, I'm really be a, you know, your me. pops. I know your pops is locked up, but like somebody would have stepped in and been like, "Hey, don't do that over there. Let me show you another way over here." What age is that? man i feel like early as possible because i was already curious it don't even matter what i did i was already curious at a young age i feel like the the younger the better if you could get on a young and me personally if nigga would have caught me at like bernie elementary fifth grade i'd have been a different life change i wouldn't even be here right now but yeah, fifth grade, probably like right before they hit middle school. That's when, like as a man and, and on the West Coast specifically, just because it's so influential over here. I'll be thinking, I'll be tripping. It's so influential. <laughs> like it's so influential over here, man. We got- I ask that because a lot of times, I ask a lot of the homies that like, especially people who, you know, been in the streets, then dropped out of school, whatever the case may be. What what were the, um what are the, the main reasons why you decided to not continue with, with your education? Cause I was stupid and I thought, I thought, I thought everything would happen faster because the people around me, like I was the best of my group, like of, of the MCs and everything. So everybody had these delusional dreams that we was all going to make it. And everybody was just fake gang banging. And just, it was just so much stress weed at the time. I think <laughs> it, was, it was just a lot going on. So, when, so I had like, I had people that was like pumping that, the support in that decision. And I can only imagine, like, before you go do, like, a drive-by or something, like, what's what's that feeling? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, definitely, definitely definitely don't wish that upon. I was so stupid. That was just stupid, man. I wish I would have saw it all the way through just for myself. Just because sometimes I'm like, damn, nigga, you really the nigga. Then he's like, nah, you not. You didn't even, you couldn't even finish that easy shit. Man. Like, would you would you go back at this point though? I mean, you're, you're still relatively young, bro. I mean, you wouldn't think about taking college courses oh, or yeah. just anything of that I'm nature. Gonna that. I'm gonna do that just for me because yeah. it's so crazy. Cause like if we talking like my family, like I'm the first person in my family to even like have this perspective. Wow. 
Wow. You me? Like, yeah. have a perspective that, you know, like, I have a real passport, bro. Like, that's to my family. My mama just got her passport in her 30s. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. So, like, they thought I made it when I was on, like, No Jumper back in the day. They thought I made it wow. when I was, like, on YouTube with a million views on a cipher. So, it's like, school is such a low bar which isn't good we're not saying this is good at all facts like growing up where we from school is such a low bar that it take artists like me to kind of like tell you why it was stupid and then like go back and then double back and show y'all like you can't do it just it's cool yeah hella cool like it's hella cool because you get to meet hella people and i wish i would have man my network of people would have been so more dominant that's one of the biggest things that I tell people all the time because I, I went to Long Beach State, right? I went to, wow. so I went to St. Anthony in Long Beach, downtown Long Beach, wow. whatever, and then graduated from Long Beach State. I hated school. I was not a student. I was not one of those 4.0 G, 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 GPA students. I was very average. And to be perfectly honest, probably below average, to be perfectly honest. But the network of people that I met through there, that, that's you, you can't you can't make that back for sure for sure so i like that that your mindset is there and you like man if i you know choose to make it happen it's because of that and you realize that you know what you missed out on it uh-huh. now that that path isn't for everybody i'll be perfectly honest but to recognize like damn that could have been a, a way for me to to do what i'm doing right now as well yeah it's kind of like that that tall homie that's always like i could have went to the league Right. Like that's how I feel, <laughs> that's how I feel about college. Like I'm yeah, telling yeah. them, like I'm really that smart. Like oh, I got a GPA. They're like, go back then. I'm like, oh, oh that's, yeah. what, that's what separates the league from college. I right, can, right. I, like right. I can do that. So yeah, that that definitely love love the whole. I want to I want to uh, read you something from um, a song called Red Fox. Hell yeah. Okay, it says. It says niggas still tripping off old shit that I said, spitting by crumbs that was making me bread. Mm-hmm. Niggas still tripping off the of old shit that I said. Black, what I say, black wax. Some, some about crumbs that was making me bread. Yeah, I d- definitely remember that one. Um, when you said that, it, I just it stood out to me just because, like, when you said niggas still tripping about old shit that I said, spitting by crumbs, it was making me bread. Right, mm-hmm. that was the bar, and I was just like, okay. I understood what you were saying, but did that come from somewhere else as well? Like, as far as like an experience, definitely. like definitely got stopped by my OG. That line came from, um, he kind of inspired that whole song. I, I got stopped by my OG and he was talking about some shit I did in like 2009. Like he was talking about an old song. Cause I've been shooting at that same park forever. Mm-hmm. So he was like, Oh, I remember when you came by and he was talking, he said some line that really wasn't even that tight for real. <laughs> but he was just on it. And I was like, bro, like, do you not understand like where I'm at now and what I was talking about back then? Like I was talking about like county building and like, you feel me? I was still doing shows at Case of Raw. Shout out to Case Raw. My niggas was booking me back then. Niggas was booking me at um on 7th and Cherry. Niggas was booking me at downtown. Niggas was booking me at Shannon's. I'm like I was at all these bars back then, like young too. Couldn't even, you know, go in, get out type shit. A lot of the times back then like 2009 and shit like that was wet so it's like that era made me who i am you know what i'm saying and niggas still remembered in little bars like the little baby ass bars like <laughs> well what i what i what i was trying to figure out was when you said spitting by crumbs it was making me bread you was talking about like your raps back then as far as like you didn't look at them like they were they were necessarily worth anything at that time yeah, I was very, I'm very cynical when it comes to, I'm hard on myself, head yeah, when it comes to my shit, man. Like, I be feeling like shit be so trash, like, and I be feeling like it's like little, like, I'm giving them such a small portion of what really happened that I feel like I'm giving them a disservice, but I got to remember, like, they didn't see it, so they don't have an expectation on, like, what was, what was, yeah. actually, you know? Now yeah. you, you, you got, you got, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, and if we're missing out on anything, but the the projects, projects that you do have out right now from Side Chick uh, Files, Volume 1, Black Wax, which she just uh, pretty much photoed a song from, Grace Park Gospel, and then Grace Park Legend, which is out right now. What do you feel like the evolution of, of Huey Brits has been this whole time? Do you, you know, now that you kind of have this new project out there, do you, are, are, are you like, man, I see it, I, I feel what I'm growing into? Um, like, what are those things that you're looking at for yourself in terms of evolving as an artist? What's like the biggest difference that you can tell from then to now? 
definitely invested in myself, man. I was such a, I was so cheap with my art back then. I thought talent was just going to drive me to the moon, man. I'm thinking but it didn't get me nowhere. Like paying for mixing, paying for mastering, paying for videos, paying for it, paying for uh, ads, paying for shit, hearing the, the quality of it, paying, looking at the co uh, cover art. How can we make this cover art better? How can we make it captivating? Like, how can I not make it corny? Like, you know, like so many, how can I makes it better over time that when I got to this point, I kind of was like, this food is done. Like if niggas don't eat this, I was at a point, <laughs> keep it real with you, I was like, if niggas don't like this, this city is pure haters. We talking like wow. your haters. Like if you don't like yeah. this, I put so much effort into that visual, like that visual, like I sent it back so many times. Like I had to make sure I told the story correct. It was people in that video that was like, beefing i couldn't have them in there i sent it to my mama my granny like so many real people i'll tell you the biggest difference between my first album and my last one my first project nobody knew i made music no one in my family knew none of the real ones really were. no one really knew they thought i was wow. just playing around you know that cousin that rap whatever yeah 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 this project my whole family told me congratulations wow like everybody even the samoan cousins that just we don't even talk about it. <laughs> yeah, they like, hey, for you. you know, you dropped your shit, Oos, I see you. <laughs> Man, shout out my family. So definitely this project made me more confident in myself too. Like, oh yeah, if I tell the truth, it's gonna work. Like they want the truth. Yeah. Like, uh, as, I love, I just want to say like the truth, like as much, like, man, if you watching this, man, the truth is the best fucking marketing scheme, the best, product placement the truth nigga yeah. the truth the bare truth too right. even the part where you look a little crazy that's what we want right for sure i for agree sure. with you that's 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 how i i 100 agree with you um you do speak truth to power a lot and you and i and i noticed that um you very honest about your situation with your pops mm -hmm. and i i, I and I, I that's commendable because a lot of people aren't transparent with that and then also fatherhood as a whole for you right uh i know chuck want to talk about that but as far as your 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 dad specifically, damn. So that's the job. As far as your dad specifically, though, how what did he ever was? Because I remember you talk. I remember you talked about like him being in the streets and him being in, in, incarcerated, um, most of your life or whatever. Did he ever, you know, dabble into the into the music or ever? My dad is a purebred G. Like the nigga was born in the seventy, born in nineteen seventy, grew up in the eighties. Daddy was our his daddy was already like already raised kids. He was the last one, so he was the on the run. He was the only one that was allowed to go outside late, play football, met his hood, playing football. Typical hood, like that. I'm talking from the <laughs> he lived just the hood nigga's dream. Like went to met my mama, went to jail, got out. She took him back. Like, nigga, what the <laughs> Like, nigga, what? So it's kind of like my dad was just the, the dude that just really just was like my street smarts. I didn't have to do, I didn't have a dad that was like, how do you feel today? My dad was more like, nigga, you got condoms, nigga, you good? Like, <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you straight? Like, them niggas fucking with you? Like, your mama good? She still sexy? Okay. <laughs> For sure. Real like hood nigga, and I, my mama's like an eclectic black woman. Like, let could have been a scholar till she met my daddy. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying. So I had the best of both worlds. Like, I never, I never had roaches in the house, but at the same time, like, you know what I'm saying. Like, it wasn't like my, we had stolen cable. Like, so it was like <laughs> I was like, world, yeah. <laughs> it was like so when you when you say eclectic, are we talking? Janae Aiko, we talking Erica Badu. Uh, my mama was more like into everything. Like she didn't see, like she was a hood chick. She's a hood chick. I'm telling you, like she don't shit. She gonna hate that. Uh, she, but she into everything. Like she, in, sometimes she'll just be in like, she'll just be into flowers. I'm like, damn, you, we, we learning about flowers now? Okay, sometimes, yeah. you know? So she just had like a broad spectrum of shit she was into. And like, I feel like if she would have never met my dad, she could have explored that into but then you wouldn't be here. So I mean, oh, that's the both worlds. So when your when your pops came home, what was something that what was something that he that both you showed him and he showed you? Man, he showed me that silence is golden. He silence in situations is just just golden. Like that nigga just is so quiet and smooth. And he it seemed like he know when to say stuff. He just always know when to say stuff, when to do stuff. 
And what I learned from him, man, Netflix, he didn't even know what Netflix was, man. I <laughs> he showed Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> oh my God. Look, I put it on the shit, the login, yes. and uh, and I left. And he called me like, uh, it's cool. Like, I don't got pay. I'm like, no, nah, you like you good. Like you said it's cool. It ain't like, blockbuster. Cool. Like, it I'm ain't like, blockbuster. I'm like, go watch whatever you want, uh, whenever you want. You good. Hey, so so you you mentioned something, I believe it was in a in a documentary how um you know your your dad, you you met him at three, right? And yeah. how how he hit a lot of hit hit things from you, right? Oh, he, he hated, um, he hated it. so now being a father, are there things that you hide from your daughter as well? Like kind of like in that same sentiment of like, you know, I want to make sure that she knows what's going on, but there's certain things I don't want her to know about. I feel like my dad is talented. If, if any talent that my dad ever had, it was hiding his cripping. That nigga knew how to, really? boy, my granny and them would come around. That nigga turn around with a bloody fist. And I'm like, nigga, how the f- how? <laughs> How did you just switch into gentlemen that quick? Yeah. And that's why I'm like, oh, these are some real gang members. Like they, <laughs> they like they do this different. Like yeah, they, yeah. they respectful with it. But um, man, I don't. I feel like my dad was living such a life, hiding, running from demons, running from so much shit that uh, that I could live this free. That I don't gotta hide from my daughter. I'm a rapper, bro. That's it. I wish I did something else. I just rap. You know how you know how yeah. fucking smart I gotta be and how much shit I have to comprehend just to break the wall down that I'm a rapper. Like, damn, this nigga. Okay, cool. Like he ain't just one of them. Like, God, y'all done fucked it up for me so bad. I finally got it. <laughs> I came in here now. I'm like, damn, I don't even gotta hide. Your daddy a rapper. Right. Like, she yeah. looks on, she's gonna be on TikTok. Like, well, she definitely not one of these rappers. So, yeah. so how so, we get this house. What 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 dad advice would you give to other fathers out there? You know what I'm saying? Being a father yourself, like what, what advice to other fathers would you give out there just from based off of your experience? If you already, yeah, if you already a dad, man, then and you there, you already pretty much doing 90% of the work for real. You gotta just be there, man, and, and make sure what you ingesting, not everything you ingest gotta go into your kid. Like, you know how motherfuckers be like, well, just because I my daddy did me like that. Not everything gotta. Everything ain't gotta go to her. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, she don't gotta know everything about you either. Yeah. Like everything can be discovered. Yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. really, that's the best part about being a father. You discovering, oh wow, this is what my daddy went through. This is what my mama went through. Wow. That's why I used to get my ass whooped for doing that. Wow. And then they slap you and you wanna call them and then they do you how you used to do them. Oh, beep. Nope. I call my nope. mama. I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> not now. I'm, I'm in Miami. What? <laughs> How you? What you doing out there? Well, I'm at home with a kid. Wow. So is the your daughter? Is that your only child? Yeah, for now. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to have a lot though. You want to have a, the whole, a whole, uh, whole kid from Boodle, huh? I'm trying to boost you. You're a fool. Hey, don't say that. Oh, you, bro, you, you, you'd definitely be out there. Wow. Good luck with that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, anyway, nah, this but, conversation I, get a little too fertile for me. But uh. <laughs> Is, is is there anybody that's tapped in with you that surprised you or that or that was like you know fulfilling for you? Daddy. I can't hear Daddy. you. Daddy. You hear me? Hold on. Let me make sure. Yeah, what'd you yeah, say? That, I said, I said that boy Diddy tapped in. Diddy, oh, word? Man. Yeah. What did he, he, he shot you a DM? He said it's love or what? Nah, uh, yeah, he did that. But <laughs> uh it was a weird day. All right, let me tell y'all this day. So whatever, I don't know what the fuck happened. Revo posted me on Instagram. I don't know. I really don't know how they even found my shit, honestly. Revo posted that shit. Snoop commented on it. So he put comment, then followed me, then DM me. It was like, you going in, nephew? I'm like, fuck, Snoop just hit me. So I'm at a photo shoot, screaming, everybody screaming. I'm like, damn, it can't get no better than this. I leave <laughs> in, the, in the bins with the homie. I'm going up, playing music, smoking. We like, yeah, we about to go get some food. Cool. I'm like, cool. This my day. Nigga, I Snoop tapped in. Yeah, I'm going to go to the compound. Yeah, all that. Did he follow me? <laughs> what? The homie dropped me off and was like, yeah, bro, you getting too, you out of here. Like, I'm going <laughs> to hit you. I'm going to hit you. The nigga tapped in um, t- maybe like four days. He followed me for a minute. Was just watching stories for a minute. Shout out Puff too, man. That part. It was fun, but um, we whatever we was going up, going up. This nigga motherfucking. I, I went to a party with the homies, with Buddy Jazz, Cartier, cousin Stiz, the homie Cedric, 
Um, it was so many people there. And then Diddy, I, I'm asleep. I wake up the next morning, Diddy hit me, say, when I'm partying with the guys, what's up? I'm like, oh, Diddy, this is crazy. Like, bro, like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Long Beach, bro. Literally, <laughs> he fucked my whole day up, cause like, and now he just be liking shit. Like it's weird. I just went to. <laughs> hey, he and still, he and you can shit. you can tell he's still processing this right now. He's like, yo, this nigga, I was just at a party with this nigga. That I, was day. With, I was just with Quincy. Shout out to Quincy and then yeah. him. Shout out to all them, man. It was his birthday. Happy birthday to him. But nah, man. I, now we just tapped in with his this whole circle somehow. <laughs> like, that's why there, there's a line pop pop said in the interview he was like man i have famous friends now and just him marveling over that concept is kind of what i see right now like the fact that you know your, your talents got you to this point where people are recognizing you now and it's still like you know you're like wow this this is still new for me you understand i want to, I want to say on the record too i want to rap with russ i was hey, just about hey. to ask you that russ watch my stories um for a minute but i'm gonna just go out and say it russ i want to rap with you bro i think you hard as fuck i think your whole mentality is hard i think what you stand for is tight and niggas be scared to rap with you i feel like so i'm gonna say it there you go on the hey, record that's man. right there that's a psa to russ Boom. it is hey it's gonna happen too yo for sure I, I fuck with russ bro russ is a real one i like i like i like his get down bro and he i, I love it i love it now, if, I now, could, if i could get to that level i'll be all right now we, we couldn't we can't talk about about uh Huey Briss without talking about uh Nico uh, Beats man talk about how you guys linked up man I feel like you guys is chemistry your energy and what he brings to the table as far as sonically for you is out of this world man so how, how did how did that um relationship build yeah we're gonna go on a record we're gonna go again on record and say if it wasn't for Nico I probably wouldn't even be here you wouldn't even know how I sounded because I was so insecure about rapping on people's shit all the time. And Nico kind of saved me for me, took me. He got me stopped thinking so much. Motherfucker, stay with beats. His daddy, a legend, DJ Baboon from Dilated. So it's like, nice. he just don't gotta, he don't make music from the same vein as a certain, another producer. He not worried about a placement. He not worried about, he don't care. He just like, yo bro, this sound good to you. Cool, how you feeling? Like, and yeah, definitely. Man, that's a good dude. That producer, man. Is is are you are you hands on when it comes to the production as well, or do you just let him cook and just kind of just rap over the shit? Like, what's the process like when you're actually creating the music? I'm gonna come clean. Lately, he's been in his bag. So lately, I've just been like, like G, got G Perico got one, and when he came over there, he just knocked that beat out like five minutes for G came, and I was just very impressed with my guy. Like I was, like, you know, he was like, "This is my homie." Like, you yeah. Know, how to beat that quick like damn i didn't know you had that but you don't really know a nigga till you till you're under pressure in any situation so he showed his ass in that one so i'm definitely i'm proud that that's my nigga man i'm, I'm excited to see what he do what, Bro, what, that, go ahead. i was gonna say what, what's a hidden talent that that huey Briss has that people may not know uh that that you have i skate for real like road on wheels for real word like, like for real skateboard or skate actually skate Roller skate. AD Roller skate. Soul, World on Wheels, Moonlight. Come on, name it. Wow. Fountain Valley. Where we at? So like you, you can dance and skate backwards and like I listen. You do I, the splits. Listen, as good as I rap is as good as I skate. You do the splits? I don't do the splits. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're gonna do that to me. I'm gonna say that to Sweetwater and all them, but no, nah, I definitely love skating more than anything. That was my first love. I used to go to Road on Wheels. I used to have to, uh, I used to stay in the, in the fucking West Adams 20s with the homie uh, granny just to fucking be close enough to go to Road on Wheels. Like, I used to get banged on at that store right there on Normandy and Adams. Y'all know. <laughs> I used to bang on me and be like, there go that Long Beach nigga. Yo, so with, with you know, speaking of the talents and things of that nature, you mentioned, um, being a rapper, right? Prior to rapping though, what what was it that, were you in, had any other interests with like, if, if rapping wasn't on the table, what would it be that you would be doing these days? I'm not gonna say on air, but I don't think okay. I would be in such a great you, position mentally. There we go. I'll take that. I wouldn't be in that. a good mental place without music. I feel like music is a definite escape for people that have the talent. Do you think that, do you, do you think that I, I'll leave that right there? But do you think that um, I, how do I phrase? Do you think that people think that Long Beach is sweet? 
when it yeah. comes to you know how like people always mention like they never mentioned Long Beach with any really real fortitude when they when they talking about oh this place and that place and this place. I'm not gonna say no cities, but you know what I'm saying. I feel like Long Beach just got that rep because at one point we just started not giving a fuck. We were so far over there, we said, fuck it, nigga, dye your hair, nigga. Ain't nobody gonna see that shit anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like fuck it, nigga. That's some real shit. <laughs> like, get the nose ring. But I feel like when the- <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like when the when the Inglewood cousin came through, he was like, nigga, take that weird shit off. Nigga, what the fuck is you doing, nigga? What the fuck is you with this goddamn skateboard, nigga? Yo, you yes. know what's funny about that is I was talking to one of the homies, and I remember when the transition started to happen a little bit. And, it, and you know, the, the Long Beach always been to white people, it's a great place to raise a family. To me, I'm like, nigga, that's still Long Beach. Like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? So, I remember like uh, talking to one of the homies and they were like, bro, I ain't gonna say who and all that, but he was like, bro, them dudes with them, them dudes with them with them hair dudes and them skinny jeans will tear your tear your head off, bro. Like, you better leave them alone. Stop oh. playing with it. Been so many descriptions that I've heard. Like, who shot at you, bro? Yeah, some nigga with nigga with the skateboard and yeah. <laughs> I don't know, nigga had like an eyebrow ring or something, bro. Like I can't, I can't explain it, but the nigga pulled out on me at the gas station. I'm like, at the gas station? What was you doing at the gas station? Yeah, nigga, I don't, you don't even got a car, bro. bro. Like, what's going on? Like, oh yeah, Long Beach is definitely for that. But yeah, uh, no, I just, I, I always wanted to get some inside perspective on that because I, I talked to, I talk to Vince often too, and mm-hmm. it's always interesting to hear different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. You ask Vince, he got a, probably another hundred answers with in-depth hood facts, and he's an encyclopedia. Me personally, I just know I was so far away from the bullshit. From from I would I know about. I mean, we had the cousins that lived by Centennial, so we knew like okay, like they're aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> we cool. We we like to fight, but our competition was like a little bit le- like 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 lightweight. Compared yeah. To- it's like those guys was fighting dudes fresh out the county and shit in high school like you know what i'm saying like god damn guys we're just trying to skateboard and maybe get a girl oh man yeah one, one fun fact about huey briss that i learned while listening to your music man and, and correct me if i'm wrong is it true that um the way you were disciplined was by by doing karate how the fuck did you know that this nigga I'm, on, I'm on my narwhal shit right now yeah my grandpa uh Funny it's in a uh, Wrigley district of Long Beach. I'm trying to remember the street. In the rigs? In the rig. My 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 uh this how cold my grandpa was. This nigga had like an appliance shop next door to a dojo. What type of nigga is you? What? How is that mean? a dojo appliance shop? He'll fix your vacuum and he'll like how you Beat in your a ass. Dojo? <laughs> like God, damn, nigga. so I used to get so one time. I, whoopings wasn't working. My mama was like, this ain't working. And she only called my grandpa when it's like, bad, this bad. Party. This nigga Muslim and shit. Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> it's a whole different story, yeah. That nigga different. But um, nigga, that nigga used to make me put weights on my ankles and on my <laughs> arms. This is torture now, think about it. And run like this with weights. And then I would have to TP so my le- this is my body and then just your ankles could go up. Wait, how old were you? Nigga, a kid. <laughs> no, I'm give me under age 10. One. Under 10. You weren't even double digits. No, I was doing, <laughs> I was, I think I stole some Pokemon cards. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I might have stolen some Pokemon cards and my mama found out and was like, yeah, that's the last straw, nigga. I came, oh, I came home crying like a motherfucker. I remember that day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was worse that. than a whooping. I never take I I take the belt any day than that than karate. Got you. Now nah, I, I I just feel like it. And for the record, for the I ain't no you know I, it was in your music. You actually rapped. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I was I like, but, so okay. Before we close out, because there's a couple of things we want to make sure we hit on, and I want to make sure that you get out everything that you want to make sure we talk about as well. But we do something called curbside confessions, right? Crazy stories as a driver, as a Uber. Have you ever had any like? Any wild Postmates stories or Uber Uber Eats or even in the Uber crazy stories? I think the craziest one, not that crazy. Like I got in a car accident with the Uber driver and I think bro wanted to hit and run. I think he would have did it what? if he wasn't in the car. <laughs> he had to second guess it like, 
damn, I got a witness. For two seconds, I, bro, really forgot I was in the whip. And like, <laughs> he looked like, you know, when you hear, you know, when a car kind of older, so it like got to pick up before it really do its thing. Yeah. Bro was about to pick up. You could feel it. <laughs> and then the other car cut him off. Like, where you going, bitch? Like, nah, you ain't leaving. I'm like, oh, shit, this is crazy. I'm like, yeah. oh, another Uber? No, nah, that, that is for sure curbside oh, confession. Man, that was weird. Now, one, um, one, we, since you're in the manifesting and, and speaking things to existence as well, man, what's one thing the year can't end without Huey Briss doing what? Man, proving myself right, man. I, I knew back then, nigga, I, I had some shit, and the shit I had was like different shit than the mother shit, them dogs are shit now. So I was like, I definitely want to prove myself right this year, but the more, the more tangible uh, aspect, you know, uh, probably, probably, you know, the 300 person capacity show, hard ticket. Want to, want to see if we can knock that out maybe by December. So get some, uh, get some, get some steam rolling on this deluxe. The deluxe yeah. coming out real. I think it's deluxe coming out July. BG Perico, Buddy Kent, Lord Apex. We trying to get Larry June on there. But um, that's about it. Really, just trying to sell, trying to sell out. Show. I really want to be a hard ticket act. Yeah, yeah. I want to do whatever it takes to be a hard ticket act. Mm-hmm. Whatever it, it takes. Promo yeah. runs, signing fucking baby hands. I don't care. I want people at them shows having experiences. Now, now while things are slowly opening back up, so we're well on our way to get back to that, man. Did 2020 have a, a significant impact on your life? You know, I know, I'm sure you was your daughter born in 2020? Nah, she too. So she- Oh, she okay. Was, I got you, got you. She was already booming, but definitely stopped my, my tours. I had a, I was on tour with Sango. Oh my God, I was living life. I was on tour with Sango. I had a show booked in Camden, London. I never been to London. I was like, damn, this is crazy. Booked, paid for. They paid me ahead of time too. Wow. Front and back in. I was like, oh my God. And I hadn't dropped a record since 2018. So that was teaching me, like, oh, like you still in demand in other places. So I was starting to learn about the business circuit. Yeah. And COVID pandemic boom hey can you send the money back <laughs> you're like fuck now this deposit is not refundable bro oh man now, and now i know but but, but what, what's one of the main things that that you know obviously everybody went through their years in different in different ways 2020 hit people different differently right what was one thing that you did learn from um going through that shutdown and kind of locking in man i just learned that uh repetition really is key if you I, I really I'm really a writer like when I was had downtime I was writing I feel like the only reason why I wasn't writing all the time is because she was so popping everywhere that I couldn't really stop and just be like okay life is really tight right now let me really get in like nah like I had time to sit down and really process it and like what am I doing like what am I writing about not what am I saying who am I saying it to like who's gonna connect to this even though I never would have expected the people that connected to my shit to connect to it, but that's not for me to do. That's, that's up to them. But yeah, man, just really just focusing in on my writing, man, really, you know, like all this shit is cool. The fashion is cool. Dressing nice is cool. Working out. All that shit is cool. Power to you. But if you a rapper, you uh, raps. Yeah, rap. Yeah. That's what it's about. So I got pages of raps, man. I mean, I'm ready. Any nigga. One 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 question I have, and I'll, I'll end it with this, unless Head has something else. Um, we we talked about Long Beach, obviously filling the shoes of Snoop Dogg, and you obviously adamant about like, bro, I'm not even tripping off of that, right? So, would you would you rather be in this business from a city like Long Beach, where you know the Snoop Dogs and whoever, right, are, are obviously paid that, that lane, or would you rather be from somewhere else that? nobody has any attachment towards right and try to build that city or that story up with i guess i'm asking like you're using you're able to use the influence of that to, to pave your own your own lane to do your own thing but there's other people that let's just say north dakota right that they're trying to figure out how to how to create their own story is there i don't know if there's a, there's a way of even asking this if no you is asking there, a good is question there, is there a would, I rather get, would i rather get it from the mud from straight from maine yeah, my nigga first rapper from Maine. What's up? Yeah, this is how we talk. This is how we look. This is our identity. Right. I created this identity. Facts. And y'all gonna follow me or 
come with a preconceived notion because they already know Snoop and they already assume I smoke weed, which I do. They assume I gangbang, which I do. They assume that I'm already one a lowrider, which I do. Right. <laughs> like, so, there's some stereotypes there, but you know. <laughs> I, I fit every stereotype, but gangbanging. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'd rather be from Long Beach any day, man. Long Beach is such a fly city, man. Ain't no city, like it's a melting pot. We got, I grew up with so many different friends. We never think about Snoop Dogg when we in the city, man. We have fun. Right, right. We have it. It's so much shit. Long Beach is still fun. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's boring for me now because the shit I like to do is a little more Soho House than Case of Rock. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? I do really appreciate the ghetto-ness in that yeah. city. That's a unique ghetto. Because the <laughs> niggas, some of them niggas really didn't grow up that bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You get me? Some of their mamas sure. were doctors. For sure, for sure. The, the new new complex is, is real in my city, for real. Yeah, man. For real. Man, Huey Briss, man, this is a phenomenal conversation, man. The first of many, I feel like, man, I, I, I'm i glad we were able to have this conversation, bro. But is there anything that you want the people to know that we haven't touched on yet? Obviously, Grace Park legend out right now for the folks that want to you know, stream it, support it, and check out the videos and everything. Oh, man, I just want, I just, I just want my, I just want to get more confident fans. I don't want fans DMing me, asking me, what should I do? I want a fan to tell me what I'm doing. Like, hey, nigga, you need to be doing this if you want to get popping. I wish a fan would have told me four years ago, make a TikTok. Like, be more of a supporting fan. Don't, supporting your artist is not just, uh, like, buying my shit. That's cool. I tell another artist that you think I'll sound good with. Just DM him. Hey, you should work with him. Put me on people mm -hmm. radar. Do the do the real shit, cause that I don't need no depressed ass fans, man. <laughs> <laughs> to be <I'm> honest, not, <laughs> it's cool. I love y'all, but God, y'all be in my DM so. <gasps> hey, <laughs> hey, bro. To be honest though, you probably helping him more than you even realize too. And that's that's the gift and the curse of this. Is like. You're gonna have to take on some of that, but the music that you are like are putting out there, so many people can relate to it and they feel like they know you. They feel like you the homie because of with the pain that you're pouring into your music as well. So take it with a grain of salt. I, I know, I know what you mean, but sometimes people might take it as like, damn, he don't fuck. I get what you mean. Nah, you, but you 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 impacting people on a different wavelength now, especially now you got more attention. Mm -hmm. It's you gonna have, and I'm sure you've already gotten the, the, the DMs and the messages already of people telling you how you've already changed their lives as of right now. It's gonna be happening tenfold, bro. Straight up. Mm -hmm. I thank God for it, man. It could have went another way. Man, but we we appreciate you, man, for having this conversation, and we look forward to the next one, bro. I appreciate um, y'all, man. Yeah. Both of y'all, head Chuck, for real, man. This is this is the beginning, man. We go, come on. Come on. And then when, when they let people come up in here, we, we want to hear some real, some real, real live raps. Real oh. Grace yeah. Park legend. You know what I'm saying? The one and only Huey Briss, homegrown radio. Chuck does with DJ Head. Homegrown. Oh,